Okay, peeps, welcome back. So today we're going to be going over the Grayscale Trust, the elections, and some dividend distributions. So with that being said, let's get it. Okay, so LTCN, we're getting a break above this trend line on the weekly. That's very bullish. But again, I would like to reiterate that in order to see at least some confirmation move, we need to get one above the daily. We have not gotten that yet. At the last minute, it got pushed back down below the trend line here. So we need to see a close above that. Um, once again, we have only touched oversold once in the last basically roughly about a year. So it's kind of a big deal that this thing is potentially looking at a reversal here. So now taking a look at LTCN on the weekly, pretty much what we're looking at here is a, um, we need to get above the trend line. We need to get above the EMAs and also above this resistance up here. Resistance is, uh, whoops, roughly about $24 to $27. Support's going to be somewhere around 16 to 17. And the swing high up here is going to be $54. So just measuring from the current price, if, if you think, if you're assuming this is going to break out and it does actually break out, um, you'd be looking at 163% move. Again, that's not a confirmation. That's trying to basically um, predict where the market's going to go. If you wanted to wait for a pullback, which there have been in the last couple of weeks, not sure there's going to be another one. Uh, roughly about 213% move on LTCN. So LTCN, BCHG, and HDN did have some pretty big moves up. So BCHG, this is also getting above the trend line on the weekly. Uh, the thing I want to point out here is that we do actually have a confirmation above the trend line on the daily, but again, it needs to get above the EMAs and the uh, resistance zone. So last time we had something this oversold was all the way back in August on the RSI, as you guys can see there. So it's a, it's a pretty rare indicator for this thing to hit oversold on the daily. Um, Cause usually crypto will pull back for quite some time before it has its next big move up. That's normal in bull markets. So um, at this point I would still say support down here is seven to about 780 is gonna be what you're looking at and 24 all the way at the swing high. So just to measure the move from the current price to the swing high is 138%. If it gets back down to support all the way to the swing high, it's um, a lot more. So it's 229%. HN, so this thing did uh, basically a fake out. It's back above the resistance, but we need to get confirmation on the weekly to flip this into support. Even then, it needs to get above the EMAs and the trend line. So I would say if this retests as support um, starting next week, the support would then turn to 380 to 420. Resistance would be roughly about 10 and a half still. Uh, because that is the, the swing high as of right now. So that move would be 155%. And if I go down here to the daily, you guys can see that it was indeed oversold. Last time we were oversold was way back here in May. It did have a nice little spike up before it eventually pulled back again off of that trend line. So ETCG, um, let me actually get rid of this because we don't need this anymore. So ETCG, uh, pretty much I would say, again, anywhere between 11 to about 13 is going to be the support. I'm not really counting this as a target or a resistance. I would say like maybe way up here at the top of the trend line, 1930 roughly about would be the target. So assuming that you just wanted to get it in between the middle of the channel all the way to the target, it'd be about 62%. ETH E, so this thing is pulling back. A uh, potential double top here, that could be the case. Uh, if they come out with the spot E3 ETF uh, listings next week, like we get some actual ticker symbols next week. Um, yeah, this thing could just reverse and just move shot straight up. So uh, just expect that that's a possibility. So 25 to 29 at support. Uh, I would say the cup and handle target would probably be a pretty good target. So cup, handle, and then confirm breakout. Again, price can do anything in between now and the target. So 47 is going to be the target, which roughly is equal to about where the previous swing high was. So let's just say it does pull back into support and then swings up to that target up there, 74% move. Phil G, um, I can actually get rid of this too. So uh, there's an inverse head and shoulders pattern here. I suspect this thing probably is going to pull back to the support. Again, that's going to be roughly about 37 to 40. Uh, maybe at 55 is where it stops. Uh, we'll just have to wait and see on that. So inverse head and shoulders target 301. The all-time high is at 400. 
So even from the current price to those two targets, you'd be looking at 278% and 200 and or 400% respectively. However, if it gets down here, uh, it changes entirely. So 650% and then uh, roughly about mm, almost 900%. So GBAT, uh, potential double bottom going on here. This is another hammer candle forming, but again, we still need to get above the trend lines or the trend line and also the EMAs. So we got above the EMAs last time, but did not get above the trend line. So that um, we're basically getting ready to hit the apex of this coiling move. It's either going to go up or down. It has to pick a direction. I know that. So if it goes from the current price to the all-time high, it's a 226% move. Again, that's at $32. Uh, the support you're looking at is 770 to about 970. So GLIV. Um, I'll reiterate once again that this is also a potential inverse head and shoulders pattern. Whether it plays out like that or not is a different story. So again, the target on that is slightly higher than the all-time high. So you're looking at 80 and 84 respectively. Um, but if this thing does end up selling off back down to these kind of lows down here, just expect it might come back down to support. So that's about eleven fifty to fifteen dollars uh, from the pullback all the way to the high up here, five hundred twenty eight percent move. So G Link, um, I mean, this thing looks like it wants to get back into support. I wouldn't be surprised if it did actually happen. So it's possible. Um, again, support is going to be roughly about sixty five to eighty five somewhere in there. The all-time high is 220. And I'd like you guys to keep in mind that also a lot of these uh, breakouts kind of depend on this trend line. Again, that's a bullish trend line. Um, so the move's coiling in between support and the trend line, and then boom, pops off to the moon. So 191% on this one. Uh, GSOL, this thing is coiling as well, but I would not touch it with a 10-foot pole if it takes off to the moon. I just consider it a missed opportunity and pick something else instead. That's just me. You guys can do what you want. Um, but if it goes down, likely it is going to probably bottom out somewhere between 170 to 200. If it goes up, it's at least going to retest the highs at 580. So the risk here is about 57%. So if you manage to pick it up somewhere at the support zone all the way to the high, it's about 213% on that move. GXLM, um, it's below this trend line here, so I would say likely it's probably going to come back down and retest somewhere around this line, which is 2450. Maybe pick like a general range, like somewhere between 24 to 26 or something like that. Because again, it's it's nearly impossible to time a reversal perfectly. So 163% move. The high up there is roughly about 69, 70 bucks. Uh, mana, this thing is perfectly pretty much perfectly positioned right in between support. You can see it's also kind of coiling in between the downtrend line and the support. So whether it goes up or down, I don't know. If it goes up, it probably is going to go up to $70 at some point, maybe not immediately. If it goes down, it'll probably retest this line down here. So about 12 bucks. Uh, so from the current price to the all time high up here, 281% move. And we'll just say from this line down here all the way to the all-time high 467% move. So Zcash, uh, this thing bounced pretty much almost exactly off where I said it would. So uh, yeah, that seemed like a very short-lived opportunity. Um, I would still say anywhere between the top or the bottom of this resistance and the this line right here, or basically the top of these candles, uh, would be a good buying point. So 320 to about... Uh, 440 and 10 and a quarter at the highs up there. Again, that's not financial advice. I'm just telling you guys kind of what I'm seeing on the charts, what I consider to be a good entry here. So 174% move on Zcash. Okay. So elections are tomorrow. Um, again, it's going to be after market close for stocks and options tomorrow. Futures will be open during that time. If you guys want to gauge how the markets are going to go based on that, uh, you can do that. But I suspect the real volatility for the traditional markets is probably going to pick up on Friday. We also we may also see some of that going into next week because, again, we're getting closer to the next FOMC meeting. So uh, that's the elections, right? So I, I will not be able to watch it, actually, during... Um, while well, it's happening live because I'll be working, but I do plan on watching it after I get home and then maybe perhaps even this weekend as well. So let's go over the, the dividends here. So FEPI, uh, $1.15, 
you guys can kind of see the data here, the declaration X date record date. Um, you can always go to the website for yourself if you want to. Uh, Clip has not announced a dividend yet, but it's supposed to tomorrow. So tomorrow is the X date um, and also the record date, as you guys can see. Or by the time you see this, it will basically be the day of the X date and the record date. So the curve ETFs, uh, I'm actually going to start with TSLP down here since we have that. So TSLP, 44 cents, uh, quite a bit higher than the last couple of months. Let's now go over AMZP. So 32 cents, again, higher than the last couple of months. Uh, the AAPY ETF, which is roughly about 26 and a half cents. Again, uh, still another increase uh, month over month. GOP, this is Google. So 31 cents, a slight dip on that, but again, it is the second highest month in its records. So uh, that's pretty good as far as I'm concerned. MSFY. 28 cents. So this is pretty up there in terms of distributions. Actually, if I'm not mistaken, it does look like it is the highest of all time for this particular ETF. So that's always good. NFLP. This one is also the highest of all time. That's great. So those are all of the curve invest ETFs. Now we'll take a look at XDTE and QDTE. So you guys can see here we have XDTE. These are weekly paying ones, by the way, not monthly. So 26, a uh, little bit over 26 cents per share here. And I'll go over to, let's see if I can find it. Why do I seem to not be able to find it? I don't know why they don't have QDTE and XDTE right next to each other. That's kind of odd. So QDTE, um, Again, the declaration date is today, X day is tomorrow, and the payday is on Friday, so 35 cents per share. Again, that comes out to about $1.40 per month per share. That's really good. So uh, this is the triple QI. This is the NASDAQ version for the NEOS funds. So you guys can see here, 62 cents. Uh, here's all the information here. So they do have one for the Russell 2000 as well. I'm not gonna go over that in today's video, but maybe in another one. So SPYI. Uh, 50 cents, as you guys can see here. So that's still really good. So I'm going to lastly show you guys the positions out of all these that we have. So we have Clip. Uh, we actually have more Clip, but not on this portfolio. So there's Clip. Um, we also have Fepi here, almost 100 shares. And QDTE would definitely like to get that to 100 shares as well. And we also have, uh, let's see, what was the other one? The other one was... Uh, TSLP all the way up here. So we have some TSLP too, which you guys can see is absolutely moonshot and after hours. So that's awesome. Uh, some of the funds that we're looking to pick up for passive income in the future would be the NEOS funds. So SPYI, triple QI. Uh, we want to get XDTE. We want to get all of the curve invest ETFs or at least enough to make like maybe 20, 30 bucks a month or something like that per, per ETF. And we're also taking a look uh, pretty strongly at GPIC and GPICS, which is the Goldman Sachs um, high yielding ETFs. So anyways, hope you all enjoyed this content. Please like, comment, and subscribe, and we'll see you all later. Peace.